Welcome to Think Like a Jesuit. Today we will be discussing critical race theory. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Critical race theory. I don't have a PhD. You do. <laughs> so you mean I have to talk the entire time on you, this one? Keep it short. Keep it short. L you've been telling me to do that since like we've been studying <laughs> together for the last 15 years. Yeah. When have I ever succeeded in not talking too much about theory? I, uh, we are people of hope. You know, they really should not have given me this one too because I literally teach social theory in, uh, to the undergraduates there and they all they all realize by the end of the semester how much I just love theory, which you know very well. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, why does Father Gilger love theory so much? <laughs> <laughs> how do we define this term? I actually think it's helpful to understand critical race theory by just taking the word race out of it for a moment to understand where it comes from. Okay. Critical race theory comes from critical theory. Without over-explaining what critical theory is, it's just important to note that critical theory is an effort to understand structures of injustice in society. And I think that can help us understand a little bit where critical race theory comes from. It's an effort on the part of social theorists to understand how racial structures produce unequal systems in our modern world today. How it is that people of color experience the world differently in ways that inhibit the kind of freedom that most white Americans enjoy without thinking. Mm -hmm. So obviously the best place to turn then for some of these reactions is of course Twitter. <laughs> I'm danger. I'm worried about what we're going to find there. Well, uh, yeah, wait till we see some of these tweets about people discussing critical race theory and what it means and what it doesn't, doesn't mean and how, you know, how to apply it in the country. Mike Hixenbaugh has tweeted out, I'll add, for clarity, critical race theory is an academic study of the ways racism is embedded in society. It focused on policies and systems, not individuals. It does not deal with whether any person is inherently racist or evil based on their race would be contrary to what Ted Cruz tweeted about it. Uh, critical race theory is a Marxist indoctrination that teaches America is inherently racist, all white people are racist, color blindness is racist, our systems, judicial, military are irredeemably racist. Biden is teaching these lies to our servicemen and women. Ashton Pittman tweets out something a little bit similar. Governor Tate Reeves signed a so-called CRT ban into law today, claiming that critical race theory serves only to indoctrinate children and humiliate white people. But he admitted last June that CRT is not even taught in any Mississippi classrooms. Then uh, Heather Cox Richardson, rejecting CRT, the Georgia Board of Education promises not to promote one race over another and thus proves CRT's point. Does this neutral language mean, for example, that the history curriculum will now explain Georgia's rich indigenous history? I think as you can see from the tweets, uh, there's, I think, some pretty serious misunderstandings of what critical race theory actually is. Yeah. Um, no. Not everything that talks about racism is critical race theory. Right, and I think that, that that's something to kind of lay out at the beginning of this debate. You gotta, you gotta understand what critical race theory actually is, and especially from the academic discipline, which yeah. you, you've explained to, to talk about, thank God, so that I didn't have to do that. So what you're pointing out there is just because we're teaching about racism in the United States or the history of racism or you're, you're mentioning Martin Luther King or anything, you know, and that happens in grade schools, we're talking about these historical realities, that doesn't make what's being taught critical race theory. No, critical race theory is the effort to understand structures of injustice. The reality is, as Americans, we don't need any classroom education to know how to live within our particular race. We live ourselves as white Americans or as black Americans or as Asian Americans or Latino Americans. We live that experience very naturally. But in fact, we need some education to be able to step outside of that experience and to see what it's like to live in a way different than ours. And that's the kind of perspective, critical perspective, that real critical race theory can provide, which is very different than just any discussion of race in American history today. Yeah. I think, you know, when we're talking about Think Like a Jesuit, among the rules for discernment, Ignatius talks about when you're going into a challenge like that, right? So when you're being invited into that moment to live outside of what is normative to you.
and it's going to challenge you. It's going to shift and push on your identity and what you thought you know you were or how you thought the world was. To pay attention to this, you're going the movement of the good spirit, as Ignatius talks about, the movement of you know God's spirit would be to give you courage, mm -hmm. right? This challenge is something you can handle to give you encouragement, to remove obstacles to it. The movement of the evil spirit that would like pull you away from that experience is going to be, you can't handle this. You're not gonna be able to get through this. You can't enter into this. It's gonna blow apart everything and it's gonna to kind of decimate who you are and your identity and keep you away from actually making that encounter which will enrich you and make you a fuller uh, human being. So I think that's one of the things I would say is really important if you're going to enter into these discussions with critical race theory or you know Catholic social teaching or a challenge of the sin of racism in our country to pay attention to those movements because I think they're going to be ever present. I know in my own experiences that's been really powerful. I think that's totally true. So, so one thing that Catholicism and critical race theory have in common is recognizing that there are structures of injustice that we have to critique, step outside of to be able to understand. The second thing is that people are drawn towards freedom and that people want to inhabit this place of freedom in their own lives. So even though there are these similarities, that doesn't mean that critical race theory and Catholicism have everything in common. In fact, certain versions of critical race theory we have some real differences on. Maybe one of the most important ones is what it means to be a human person. Yeah. So some versions of critical race theory, not all, but some versions of this will believe that human beings are purely material in a Marxist sense and purely be seeking economic stability or to preserve equality in those forms. That can be true, which doesn't mean those inequalities are not present. It just means that we are disagreeing on what it means to be a human person. Right. But the challenge for us then as Catholics just gets more deeper, deeper and more beautiful, in fact, where we get to be able to say, what are these structures that are inhibiting the dignity of a human being? My brother or sister in Christ, who's standing before me, who experiences the world in a different way because of the color of their skin. Yeah, I think we've, we've talked about and mentioned the, the recognition of the sinfulness of the society we live in. And by living in that society, we are part of that. Yes. I think that, and that is a, a, sometimes I think a really hard challenge uh, for people to, you know, to, you know, I didn't personally do anything here, but I now inhabit a system that is sinful, and that, thus I have a type of culpability in that. And recovering that sense of the, the sort of the original sin, or you know, in Ignatian terminology, I think the really important thing, if you think like a Jesuit, you're going to hear this term, loved sinner. And I always, you know, I like to introduce that term during the penitential rite um, yeah. uh, of Mass. Every Mass starts with this penitential rite, reminding ourselves that we need, God, need God's mercy, that we are sinners. I'll use it a little intro and name, name us as love sinners. And I think it's so important, you know, in the English translation, loved is the first part, yeah. right? That allows you to recognize and enter into the reality of we are sinners, right? Recovering this sense of being a love sinner then allows you to enter into the power of reconciliation. If you pretend you're not a sinner, you can't experience the, the power and the healing of reconciliation. One of the only things that's gotten me to a place of courage, as you've mentioned, is knowing and loving people who experience the world very differently. Mm -hmm. So the Society of Jesus has afforded me the opportunity of living in community with black Jesuits and getting to know their experience to be able to taste just a little bit of. I'm never gonna be able to live inside of their skin in America today, but I can live next door to these people and so experience a little bit of what that's like and that sense of deep love, being able to look into my brother's face and have him tell me stories of how he's experienced the world very differently than mine, that shocks me out of my own experience as a white man in America today and it provides a critical perspective on what it is to be an American. We need those perspectives, and from that, we can build this kind of beloved community that Martin Luther King described. Yeah, I think the, the, the things that I would tell people as you're, as you're going into this is to have courage, to trust, you know, and look closely where is the good spirit leading you so that you can, you can deal with the realities of this. And um, 
and, and I think that's going to challenge you to recognize all the privileges, right? You know, the fact that we're, I'm capable of talking about this in the theory moment and not in other ways, it shows all sorts of privileges. And then it, it's going to, you know, even having these discussions, you're going to have to recognize there's going to be all sorts of moments where you recognize sin, that you're part of structures, that you're part, you've gotten all of these different privileges in my, in my particular case. And that's going to require reconciliation. That's going to require facing the reality. And the academic theory can be helpful in, in, in inviting some of those experiences. But I think what you're saying too is so crucial is um, we don't have to be afraid of the, the academic theory. Um, even if we disagree on some of the fundamentals of what it means to be a human being, we can go deeper. We can always learn even from people that we disagree with. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing to be afraid of in terms of engaging as deeply as we can with these other experiences there. Often what we're going to find when we engage deeply in these kinds of experiences is that God has already been active in that place. Maybe not fully. Maybe there's something that we really disagree with at certain points. But there is much that we can collaborate with. We have to look seriously at the structures of racial injustice in American society today, even if that makes us uncomfortable in so doing. Then we need courage and compassion for ourselves and for others to do so. But to try to insist that we do not have issues of racism today, that there aren't structures of injustice, that kind of inner resistance that we have to, to feeling those. I understand the inner resistance. We have to have the courage to face that and to remain within that place of tension and to be able to ask ourselves, what is it that my brother or sister in Christ is dealing with at this particular moment? Can I be there in this uncomfortable and difficult place and listen to them? I think then the important part becomes, you know, how do we talk to someone who's struggling or, or worried about what critical race theory is going to do, right? And I think we've hit a number of those, those points don't let the perfect become the enemy of the good, right? What is the next, you know, move you can take and enter into that? You know, you don't have to get everything right all immediately. Um, you're, you're, which I think is actually going to invite you into that moment of recognizing that you're a love sinner, right? You're going to mess it up, right? You're already part of a structure. You're already in the sinful stuff. And so how do you enter that courageously is another thing we've been talking about. So. I fully agree with you. And I hope that these spiritual tools of learning to think like a Jesuit can empower us to enter more deeply into this companionship that is the church. One of the things that can be very helpful actually in engaging with critical race theory in this way is that it teaches us that we cannot be saved alone. That's something that's very difficult for us in the modern West yeah. where we want to be the kinds of people who can do it ourselves. And this is not true for us as Catholics. This is not just something that we deal with as individuals. This is the Catholic Church. We are saved as a community, which means that when I see my brother and sister who is going through very difficult experiences, just as the Samaritan saw the one lying at the side of the road, I need to be able to draw close to the wounds that these people bear, my sisters and brothers in the Lord bear, in part because of my own inability to resist these structures of injustice, which I want to. So there's a lot of comp compatibility between critical race theory and what we're trying to do as Catholics, but there's also some key differences. It's important to understand the academic setup there, but it's, I think it's also important to recognize that we have the tools and resources to enter into this, and this is going to draw us into this re reality of being sinners, this reconciliation, and this encounter as a community that is so necessary. It draws us into the beloved community. Yeah, that's great. We hope this conversation has been a little bit of a participation in the beloved community. We're really grateful that you join us to have this difficult, uh, challenging conversation here. If you want to find out more on this or any other topic that we've been discussing, you can do so on americamagazine.org. And we ask that you like or subscribe to this video if it's been beneficial to you. On behalf of America Media, Father Eric Sundrup, I'm Father Patty Gilger. Thank you for joining us.